Hello, my name is Daniel Ripley from CG Dreams and today I'm going to show you a free 6 minute excerpt from our new video training for the Polygonal Design Unfold 3D Wizard Generation 7. The first thing to look at is the viewports. You can see that we've got two, one on the left and one on the right. The one on the left is where you'll see your 3D object in and the one on the right is where you'll see your UV layout. You'll also notice that we've got these toolbars to the left and the toolbars in the middle. They're almost identical, all but a few additional features for the middle and to the actual left. This is so we can actually have some of the control over what we see in the viewport for the UVs and the viewport we see for the 3D. To the left and to the middle of the viewport, you can see that we've got these tools and lots of them are repeating from the left to the right. To start with, we've got the arrow up here, which allows us to have a full screen for the 3D. Clicking on it and again brings it back and a full screen for the UV. We've also got these different view types, like we've got the flat polygon, wireframe and solid with wireframe. We've also got the checkered and the number checkered. So it's easy to identify different areas on the model and where they are between the UVs and the actual 3D model itself. We've also got this one with the question mark and this is so we can load a custom texture for this model. This can be found and loaded from the files menu. Load user texture. We've also got this light bulb which basically turns the light off and on so we can see it flat shaded and with shadows. We haven't got this option for the UV for obvious reasons because it's flat. We've also got these two icons here which is a F key to center on the last selection of the polygons edges or verts or we've got this one here to reset the view. You've got exactly the same selections and tools for the UVs as well. In addition to what we've seen for the 3D tools, we've also got this one here. We can switch on and off the background. We've also got this button called 2D 3D. When it's activated, we can simply start to rotate around in 3D. or revert back to the 2D view. At the top of the user interface, we've got all of these buttons along here, which correspond to a lot of the features found in the drop-down menus. As an example, we've got load object, load object with UVs already applied to them, and save object. These can be found in the files menu. We'll be going through these properly in a minute. We've also got undo and redo. We've also got a progress bar as to when it's calculating the UVs. We have cut for the seam selection and weld for a seam selection. We've also got reset to 3D, which basically abolishes any 3D unwrapping that you've done. Finally, we've got the unfold button, which basically unfolds and calculates the UVs from the UV seam selection. This is the stop button and it aborts any current process being unfolded. We have different methods of packing as well. As an example, when we press this button, it will pack the UVs and reassign the actual size of each UV portion of the islands. Whereas this one here will actually repack, but keep the orientation and keep the scale of each UV island. In here, we have actually the settings for this, for the packing. We'll be looking at this in a bit more depth later on. We also have the symmetry, so we can work in symmetry. 
Note that your model must be 100% symmetrical for this to work effectively. And finally, we've got the settings for symmetry. To the right of the interface, we've got edit mode, selection, and constrain. In the edit mode, we've got the common selections like select for islands, translate, rotate, and scale. We've also got this feature called the density map brush. These four can be selected between F1 to F4, and the density map brush could be selected with Shift and F1. Moving down to select, we've got the common selection component types like points, edges, polygons, and islands. These selections can be between the F5, F6, F7, and F8. We've also got the clear space button, which clears any current selections like polygons, edges, and vertices. We can use a spacebar also to activate this. We've also got found in the selection type mode here, the edge shortest path, which will, which will basically connect one selection to another A and B points. We've also got edge loop selection as well. This video training consists of seven chapters split into logical order for you to follow along with. In chapter one, we have a general introduction to what we are going to be learning. In chapter two, we take a brief look over the interface and learn some of the basics, like functions for importing and exporting, and what each button and drop down menu feature does. This chapter is handy for future reference if you need to quickly run through where to find certain features and functions within Unfold 3D. In Chapter 3, we look at purely the navigation within the viewports, such as rotation, translation and zoom. In Chapter 4, we look at all the methods we have at our disposal for selecting component types, like polygons, edges and vertices. We look at how we can select the edge loops, shortest paths, and how to quickly home in on certain pinpoints like areas we want them to get closer to when working in the viewport. Next in Chapter 5, we do our first unwrap using some of the features we've already taken a look at. Here we unfold the human head. In Chapter 6, we utilize all that we've learned so far and put our newly learnt knowledge into unwrapping a full character, which allows me to show the rest of the features such as constraints, pinning, optimizing and relaxing and much, much more. The intention of this chapter is not to instruct on my method of scene selection or how to unfold a character, but to demonstrate the tools and features that open up the full potential of this software. Finally, in chapter seven, we look at what's been added in the latest version, 